Uh, you told us about um, that you, uh, before that you wanted to be an artist from a very early age. Or how has your view of art or your practice changed? Um, it hasn't changed at all. It's exactly the same. <laughs> I have changed, not my uh, my view probably. I'm not sure I was aware exactly what the view or the awareness was, but uh, if you refer to images of uh, your childhood, you transfer them, transfer them to an adulthood in a very special way. You think they make sense and you don't know if they do. Uh, when you spend your whole life doing basically getting involved in the same thing, it becomes a part of your understanding of what you are, your being, your life. So. It's very difficult to me, for me to sort of uh, split that in different parts. I think um, uh, it's impossible for me to divide I mean, uh, 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 my life and my activity as an artist. The, then again, as I was uh, explaining in the talk, uh, I think the artist is a sub... Is, 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 is a, collateral damage to the art. It's not that interesting. I think the, art, the artists are nice stories, make nice stories, but probably the art is more important, and not probably, certainly the art is more important. And why is it more important? It's because the person who looks at the art is then the artist. The artist who use the instruments to provide the art, again, is just a go-between. Uh, you've just been announced to, uh, the, uh, the most influential Swiss artist. How do you see yourself in the Swiss art scene and how has it developed since you... Hmm. Uh, I, I don't know who makes such announcements <laughs> uh, I, I, and I don't know how important an artist is in general mm -hmm. and uh, I certainly think there's many, many artists in Switzerland which are uh, important and they all are and even the ones we don't know about are as important. So I don't believe at all in this kind of uh, hierarchy or this sort of gra graduation. Uh, uh, that people again talk about an artist as uh, influential is just because we have to construct a narrative. We have to understand where things come from and in, in order to understand them we have to invent them. So the artist, the most inf influential Swiss artist they're talking about is an invention. How do you see your work or yourself in the uh, in the context maybe of the Fonus Obaila and the collection of the Fonus Obaila? Then again, it's difficult for me to to uh, to consider that exactly where you have to fit things around. Uh, uh, I would hope again that the works handled by the foundation of mine or by any other artist have very little to do with the artists themselves, but have to do with the use of those art, uh, artworks for the foundation or for the people visiting the foundation. These are the people who create truly the works. So I'm, I'm very happy to be here to talk with you, to have works here or not. As a matter of fact, if it hadn't happened, I would be happy to be in the audience. In a way, it's the same thing. Tell us something about your tie. <laughs> My ties. Uh, um, this tie is, is made by a designer who's called Robert Godley. Uh, I bought the first one of his design in Tokyo, but it's a, a, a designer who's in New York and London. And obviously, uh, um, it's called Psycho Bunny. Uh, I mean, that, that series he does, it, and it's, uh, as you see, it's a skull of a, of a bunny with little ears. Uh, obviously, it's someone that in the art world they know, because one day when I was walking on the street in New York, <coughs> uh, someone came up and said, oh, you have a Robert Godley tie. And uh, I said, yeah. No. Oh, so, so what do you think? Uh, do, how is he? He's a nice guy. I don't know him. And they couldn't believe I didn't really have that uh, uh, special relationship with him, especially that, as probably you know, there's a painting by, by uh, Richard Prince, who sort of is uh, li like in the same family. But I like wearing ties because they, they and with the sort of uh, uh, images which are repeated, because it makes like if you're part of a, a very established club or more or less established club, uh, and it's, uh, it gives you uh, like, uh, like a signature of something that you would belong to that you don't. And as I said before, uh, uh, I was very scared about going to Bayreuth because I would have to be like a, um, 
a musical boy scout in some kind of army I don't want to d d d describe. Uh, and I like the misunderstanding in a way. I wouldn't have done that for anything in my life. I didn't. I refuse to do, I w I'm an active pacifist. I refuse to, refuse to do my military service, spent months in prison in Switzerland. That's how it was then. And that was a way of understanding my uh, involvement in the world and uh, society. And this is sort of a, a way of uh, misleading. And misleading is always brings you to the right places. Excellent. Thank <laughs> you. Anything you'd like to add? No, I know there's already much too much. <laughs> <laughs>